All right, so I've been working to get that kind of depth of a real pastel drawing in my digital painting. And so I took some of these Toulouse-Lautrec pastels and the textures of them and overlaid them in soft light at low opacities on top of my refined painting, my base painting. And then I put just a full copy of that texture behind. I like that paper. It might be something I try to emulate. And you'll see how that gives a richness to the textures. So if I combine all those soft light layers, all at 51% opacity, let's see. Well, some of them are higher, so let's see. So that's just at normal 100%. So that's what it's doing, right? But if I change it to soft light, see how it sits on top? It gives a little bit of an edge to everything. A little bit more depth and a little slide and softness in some places. Also, now that it's all on one layer, I can easily erase away from some of those edges. And now I'll continue with my refined painting. Having a little bit more of that spirit of the pastel, the slipping and sliding of it, which I'm hopeful about. All right. Also, you can see the edges of my sketch layer because it's on multiply. And so that might be a good one to erase away from. Go ahead and erase at 100% with a bigger size soft brush so it kind of naturally gradates in. Now my composition is looking more solid. All right. So far, so good. So I'm going to keep that there and kind of work on top of it. So I'm going to lock all of these layers now, my refined, my base painting, take any of them away, and you see what happens. Oh, and I get to decide if I want to drop that shoulder or not. Hmm. I think I might, actually. Yeah, it feels more, more relaxed that way. Okay. Lock everything. Now, I can't decide if I want this on or not. I could mute it. Let's see. I could also just put it on soft light itself and then maybe try white behind it. Too strong. So I get the right balance so I can, can have the contrast and the highlights and things I need. And I'm looking for a background similar to this in value of the colored photo. OK. 
Oh yeah, that's getting better. Okay. So let's lock those in place just for now. And then on top of everything, except my sketch layer, which is still helping tremendously. Call this the finishing painting layer. Now, I hope to stay on this layer for the rest of the time. All right. So, for the finishing painting layer, I'm going to want a slightly different brush, one that's not just giving me these kind of broad, granulated strokes. I want something that feels more akin to that loose crayon. Just for my finishing. You know, where you get that kind of smeary look. So I think I'm going to have to make my own brush. Where I've just been using ones I've found until now. And it's actually, it's quite easy to make a new brush. You simply go to your defaults, black and white. You say File, New. You do a new Photoshop file. It's 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. Tends to work pretty well. Because it's square, it doesn't matter what the orientation is. You create that. And then I can use the brush I have right now and kind of create a slippery, slidey brush. But you see how that texture is just so pervasive in this brush. It's and I can't do um, shape dynamics quite the way I want to. But I definitely want a lot of directionality in this. So I'm doing it at this 45 degree angle. All right, so let's say that's my brush. I'm going to say, edit, define brush preset. Call this Carl Castell. So now I've got that brush, and there it is. Now I'm going to set the brush settings for it. And the first is shape dynamics. And I want to control it with pin pressure, so it goes thick to thin. I want to really play with the size jitter. Open up the minimum diameter just a little bit, and then really play with the angle jitter. So it can go thin to thick. Right. Now, I want to play with the scattering just a tiny bit. Just so as you push harder, it starts to broaden up. Right? Like that. Now the problem is with this brush, is you get that nice slippery slidiness at the edge. That's what I'm looking for. I also need a little bit of openness in the inside. So I'm going to try dual brush here. I'm going to try to mix it with one of these other textured brushes. See what effect that has with default settings. All right, so you see how it kind of sharpens up the edge a little bit. But let's see if I scatter that more. Yeah, maybe that will work. We might return to that. Then if I go to my texture, let's take that down so there's a little bit of openness in the stroke. Ah, there we go. So now I'm slipping and sliding. But you can see that I have control of the size. Delete this all so you can see. All right. And it skitters just like a crayon would, just like a pastel. Very good. And then the jitter. Play with that a little bit.
you know, so sometimes it skips less than other times. And I can control that, I suppose, with the pin pressure as well. No, that makes it too hard to control. There we go. All right. So I think this is a good finishing type. Now for colors, so how, how it will work. And then something I've done for this entire painting, which I want to try to keep doing, at least slightly, is to keep it at 100% opacity, the brush. But here you can see now the edges, instead of just the pure granulated brush I used before, you see how the edges overlap each other slightly and soften. So when I choose different colors, they start to blend a little bit. And I can pick in between colors. Now, I might cheat just slightly and take the opacity just a little bit down, and that will give me even more variation, right? So I've done as much as I can underneath keeping these things solid. But now it's that kind of melted depth looking approach that I want to finish this off. And that's how I think, ah, nice. I get that kind of crayon texture that I'm looking for. You see? Beautiful. So sometimes customizing your brush and just understanding each step is the way to finish it off, for sure. Yeah, I like that. And it works better up close. Definitely, that looks stronger than just the pure granulations. Okay, so now for my finished finishing my painting, I'm going to try to stay mostly zoomed out. I'm curious what would happen if I swapped these two. Because I usually like to have my reference in the upper right, not like that, but like this. I think I have to do it this way. I'm uh, making things difficult. And my brush is there. I'm going to move this into it. Not as responsive as I want it right now. Come on. You can do it. Okay. All right, and I can see my, my brush texture is there. So now that's what I'm going for. So let's be bold. Let's finish this off. And now I'm mostly going to be looking at the reference. I'm kind of skittering a above it and painting and knowing I'm safe with these marks because they're on a new finishing layer. 